expert on all things gun. Thank well, you, Charlie. Welcome, Peter. Now, um, the first thing uh, that many people outside the UK think is we don't have any guns. Yes. What, why is that, and is that true? Well, A, it's not true, but I think it's because the Europeans and also the Americans just think we are shotgunners, you know. Plus fours, the whole bit with the dog, shooting birds in the air. And they're rifle people above all, aren't they? No, they're not. That's the weird thing. <laughs> you're going to be read about foreigners as well. Good, yes. good start. Yeah, yeah. Marvellous. Um, you know, that they're sort of, that they do everything, but they have very, the Europeans have very different views. Like 7 HMR, which I love and most Brits love. I was talking to a French colleague of mine and I said, no, we don't use it. I said, why? We don't use it. If we want to go and shoot a rabbit, we take a shotgun and a dog. Oh, really? Yeah, and oh. I was really surprised. And I said, well, yeah, I, said, I don't care. I'm not interested in that silly little thing. This is what the French do. So, um, so, so, it's, so for, as far as the French are concerned, they've kind of characterised us as one thing, and, but actually yeah. they are really that thing. The th what I notice on YouTube is we get, a great, we get a great many comments from Americans going, gee, I didn't realise you guys had guns. And I think that goes back to Tony Blair banning hunting with two dogs, and they, for some reason, think somehow he banned all guns at the same yes, time. Yes, I think it is, um, because they think they invented firearms, which they probably did. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly their usage and abusage. Um, and again, I've had that same vibe from Americans. They go, hey, could you say that again in English? You're not their like. Terrible <laughs> people. Uh, uh, should we, should we ha we've got an institutional racist on this morning. That's fantastic, Peter. I'm so thank, pleased you're thank here. Thank you very much indeed. I try. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the Americans, I mean, are also slightly defined by their gun misuse, aren't they? Oh, and, yes. I mean, one of the reasons one could say the British have no guns is we simply don't shoot each other with them. Well, we, well law abiding people don't. That's a, it's a, it's a well known fact. And it's only the criminals who seem to have bigger and better and more automatic guns these days that do. Um, and it's down to the government that they see us as an easy target because they can say, oh, look, da 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 da, someone did that with an AK 47. All these shooters who've got guns, we know where they are, let's ban this. And so, then, so when you say they, you mean the, the government? Yes. Right, because I, I have to say that the strange thing about British Shooting Show 2020 is uh, the media story has all been about the big game hunting that's taking place here. And here we have this gigantic gun show in the heart of the NEC in Birmingham, and I haven't seen a single headline saying, isn't it balling all these guns? Well, indeed, yes, that, that, <laughs> that's so, true. Have we, we, are we getting away with it? Is that what's happening? I don't seem to get away with it because we've just got to stumble and look the other way for a second and something happens or somebody finds out something. You know, it's like this um, rewilding thing and, and they're trying to sort of do Scotland in. I was talking to a, a keeper on it last mm. year yep. and it looks like they're trying to have a second Highland clearance, you know, the English tribe of Bonnie Prince Charlie succeeded, and it looks like that a certain government and certain people will succeed a second time with their own people, which so, is very worrying. So many things kind of beating us up in the media at the moment, yeah. aren't they? Now, one of the joys of having you on is, uh, I mean, I go back to roughly the early 14th century of uh, shooting media, but, I mean, you, you were there <laughs> during the Dark Ages, weren't you? I was. We had little bits of stick, <laughs> and then we had rocks with... Harder rocks. I think you covered the, f the first Neanderthal to throw a stone at a squirrel, didn't you? Great days. <laughs> <laughs> trophy <laughs> squirrel. Trophy <laughs> so where, just talk, let's talk about you for a second. Where, where did you start out in shooting media and, and, and what was it like and when was it? It was in 1984. I left, I've been in the army for 10 years, as you well know, Kevin. And... Um, I can, can we just can we just uh, just tell that story? <laughs> okay, well, you and me and Michael Yardley went on our most magnificent Browning press trip. I think wasn't it? anyway. We recharacterised ourselves, recharacterised ourselves as Colonel Jacoby <laughs> and uh, General Yardley and uh, Corporal Moore. Yes, so. <coughs> I had the best rank, obviously. No responsibility. <laughs> Ca carry on, Corporal. <laughs> yeah. So ex army, I joined, uh, left the army in. 1979, oh, you remember that, children? <laughs> um, and I went to work for the Met Police, D11, before SO19 as a civilian armourer, which was brilliant, but the money wasn't any good and there was no promotion. Then I moved to the BBC no. as a property armourer. Slipped through the net. Oh, I see, of course, yes, they needed you. And any, any show that needs a sword, a knife, a gun, a tank, or anything, had something to be responsible for it and train people. And and I could, we're, I could we're at a time when they're not really using outside production companies. I mean, you were no, they used batteries for Section 5, but for everything else it was us, it was in-house. Really? So yeah. Zed cars? Yes, you know, yeah. um, there might be an old Webley 32 or a Webley 38. Exactly, no. found, found on the body, that sort yes, of thing. Or number four. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you have, and in a situation like that, you know, you're reaching the kind of peak of BBC unionisation and that sort of thing. I mean, you could hold up a production just by not turning up. Well, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I've done stuff from Blackadder to... Uh, Chekhov plays, um, all requiring, in Blackadder it was just 
bows and arrows and swords and things, how to teach people to fight with swords. I'm, I mean, I'm not Alan Meek, I'm not the proper guy, but we could do it. And then I, in um, Crack in the Ice, I think that's by Chekhov, it's about this Russian platoon, 1800s in Moscow, and um, Private Poznikov, he's on his, on his stand with his rifle, sees somebody fall in the river, and he's not allowed to leave his stand. Obviously, you know, the Russians like to nout him and send him to a concentration camp. And then it was this moral dilemma, do I put my rifle down and get the guy out of the river or not? And I had to teach 30 extras how to drill with um, sort of 18th century muskets with bayonets on, which is quite good fun. <laughs> that must be hilarious. So uh, you are now, you're early 1980s, and you decide to make the jump to writing about guns. Well, that, that was actually a more of a, a financial thing. I, 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 for you. I very stupidly uh, was tempted to go and work for a company called Delta Firearms in Suffolk. Do you remember Delta? Vaguely, Britain's yes. first commercial shooting range. Yes, that's right. Yes, well, it was a good idea, if you know what I mean. Yes. But it never quite worked out. Um, I'm, obviously, no names, no pack drill, but certain people didn't really have an understanding of finances and how they run. Oh, that old chestnut. Yes. <laughs> and so I did that for a year and I was made redundant and I was just bumming around doing nothing. And someone said... Um, do you know this magazine called Survival Weapon Techniques coming out? Do you remember SWAT magazine? Yes, absolutely. If this magazine could save your life. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was because that was when the, the survival stroke SWAT thing hit the UK and everybody's getting knives and digging holes in the ground and, and eating And there, there, was no, there was no media against it. You know, people were not saying this is a bad get, thing. Everybody's saying this is a fascinating thing. We must find out more about this. This is stuff. bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all these weirdos. So but I think a lot of the weirdos came from there and went on to shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, I mean, it's fair to say you are in the sort of the, the weirdo consistency of shooting. Yes, I think that's yeah, I think I am, yes. Sorry. Well, very good. Yeah. All right, now, uh, then, uh, then the world of shooting media hits a significant bump, uh, Hungerford, 1987. Oh, yes. And uh, you were, what were you, who were you working for at that time? I was still working for a SWAT magazine, Aceville Company. They must have hated you. I mean, your magazine. That, that, didn't that represent everything that was bad about what Michael Ryan did in Hungerford? The <laughs> well, in many ways. Just to just make it clear, Michael Ryan went and committed Britain's first mass murder with a gun on the streets of Hungerford in Berkshire in 1987, and it led to a ban on... Self-loaders and shotgun restrictions. Which had nothing to do with what he was using, but... No, he, he used to sell... He used M1 he did carbine, use, and okay. I believe... Um, no, sorry, I, I could be wrong. It was either an AK or an M1, but he so had a Beretta 92F as well. Somebody will correct you. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing you know about people who read gun magazines, they, they know a lot more than you do. So um, you are presumably now looking at a rather bleak future where everything's going to be banned. Uh, how did you react? Well, I was um, my boss at the time, who's now long gone, he um, said to me, don't worry, Pete, there'll always be a job for you here. And then he fired me two months later. Ah, <laughs> good, good man. Yes, right. you know how you do. <laughs> uh, and um, <clears throat> then um, and then, then we moved on from there. And I became a milkman for seven years. A milkman? Yes, because when you need money, you've got to pay a mortgage. Yes. I don't really care what I did. No, and good. I was free, freelancing still for Paintball magazine. I, I think one has to remember, you know, if you're working in the media, start by being not proud. That, that helps. Yes, yeah, pride. Exactly. <laughs> Comes uh, before A. All right, so, uh, but you're still, you know, you're still very interested in guns. And, I mean, the ownership of guns and the use of guns and what Britain thought about guns took a definite downturn from 1987 onwards. Absolutely. You, ha you had the terrible thing in Scotland, which was awful. Well, that's 1995, was it? Yeah, 96. 96. Yeah. Don Blaine, Thomas Hamilton mm -hmm. goes... <laughs> as far as we can tell, mad. Now, there were issues there which there weren't in, in Hungerford, so Police Scotland, or Central Police, as it was at the time, should not have let him have a gun licence. This is the general feeling, though the problem is it's such a sensitive subject. Well, I think the Deputy uh, uh, Chief Constable of Central resigned over the, or was kicked yeah. out over the issue, wasn't he? Um, and that does, sort of, to me, put up lots of flags and lights, but yeah. the, the, the problem is that you get people saying, oh, well, we'll just tell them how it is, and you say, you can't, you do realise the gravity of the situation. Yeah. What actually happened, no matter what you say, it's indefensible. So you're talking about people who are saying, well, you know, we should resist bans on guns following 1996 because they thought that there was still a case for guns. I mean, at the time, I remember, it was extremely difficult to argue this. It, it was completely, because what they also did, they they got all these shooting um, disciplines together, like practical, police pistol, Bianchi, blah, 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 blah. And they went to Bisley and they showed, I think it was a government reporting um, group, what they did. And I think when they saw what people in practical pistol did, you know, out, bum, 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 mag change, they went, oh yeah, now we know why we're worried. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm, I was a practical pistol shooter myself, but it's just, 
So yeah, actually, it was kind of the practical of pistol shooters' failure to make the, to, to tell people that we're just doing this for fun. This is not real. But even then, it's indefensible, isn't it? In, in the light of well, but, but, but hang on, you, you know, we're allowed to blow away real people on Xbox 360, aren't we? So yeah, but they're not, are they? No, but, no, they're, no, but, yeah. but they're not real people when you're when you're, when you're using a practical. No, pistol I agree, mode. but it's far easier because I believe that the average British shooter. Someone said. People were worried about people having firearms in the UK, and after Hungerford and Dunblane, now they know why. And it was just a comment I think I read in the paper or something. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is I'm pro-gun, as you well know. Obviously. But by the same token, um, it's you stand up in court and you say, OK, it's not my fault, I've never shot anyone in my life, I'm safe, yeah. And there's, you know, well, there's these pictures of these kids or the people that, um, you know, from Hungerford. How do you stand up and defend that? Because... People don't like guns. Well, you can't defend No. No. Ergo, what can you do? I'm a member of a program, one of those Sunday morning programs, and um, I had Mike Yardley on there. And Mike Yardley, um, I'll give him one thing, that he comes over very well. He, he comes over as well, sort of... He's a general, he outranks us. You have well, to say Well, indeed, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, but he saluting. does... You know, he, he's, he, he's, Mike's no fool. And uh, he, he put his point across about your firearms and all this sort of stuff and what you're doing. And they, they invited this guy down from a local club and he was like, yeah, well, I think we should all have guns for self-defence. You know? right, and yeah, all yeah, the good that. work Mike did, you could see the people in the audience going, the uh. nice man in the nice jacket who's obviously in the army or ex-army, he's talking a lot of sense. This bloke's going, yeah, I can't see why we can't. And it just went, but, um, the whole Jenga yeah. thing went down. It, fa- it fell apart. OK, well, there's, there's a couple of things to, to, to draw from that. First of all, one thing that always struck me about the media is actually it's all about the audience. It's not really about what you are saying. And in that situation, I think an audience is capable of going, OK, the guys arguing for self-defence guns is clearly not what we want. Yeah. But we like the other guy. And when you sort of look at it from the audience point of view, you can say, we can ignore the man, the self-defence man. You know, the anti-gun people are going to tear him to shreds. That's, that's what's going to happen. But the sensible guy, that is still a good reason. And the status quo at the time was, well, we have guns, but we're going to take them away. And so before you answer that, the second thing is what happened subsequently, 1997 uh, ban on semi-automatics, is that no? Handguns. Handguns, Handguns, yeah. Handguns principally, yeah, yeah, that's right. Everything pistolish. Everything pistolish went in 1997, and then we saw this huge rise in gun crime. Yeah, because it's got nothing to do with people who own legal guns. Right. <laughs> so... So we have, we have, we've got two things where we have the audience reaction and we have the fact that we can argue that, look, it didn't work. I mean... No ban works. No ban works. We didn't know that in 1997, interestingly, did we? we well, at least we, we wouldn't have been able to prove it or show it, would we? No, no, not at all. But the gov- I think, by I see it as well, I'm not particularly political, but the truth of it is the government wants to get re-elected the majority of people in the UK, they don't drive motorbikes, they don't shoot guns, they don't have extreme sports. Yeah. And so they're happy to have just a little normal sport or nothing. You know. And therefore, if the government wants to make sort of looking good, well, we've got those handguns off our streets. And the most ridiculous and fatuous comment I've ever heard, those handguns were never on the streets. No. You know, they were locked up, and everybody knew where Pete's guns were, where yeah. Charlie's guns were, because that is what you need to do to be a legal handgun a gun in the UK. Yes. And, so, and people said, oh, yeah. It's great now. There's no more gun crime. Oh, really? Oh, Have really? you read this? <laughs> Have you seen this? But, 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 but I thought guns are banned. No, handguns are banned, but how do you license a criminal? <laughs> well, <laughs> exactly. Strangely enough, criminals, by definition, do not obey the law. Yeah. Usage, um, bank robbing, intimidation, oh, and occasional murder. Oh, that'll be right, sir. Five years, that's 25 quid. Yeah. Here's your Glock. Oh. Now, since then, we've, we've been sitting here in the UK being the kind of... Uh, First gun, first major gun ban in the Western world, haven't we? And then we've seen other countries go down this route, and they always look at us. Yeah. Now, recently, New Zealand. Perhaps this year, we'll see something in Canada. What can, what, what hope can you give to people when they face a gun ban? America is, you know, fighting this particular issue at the moment. Well, people need to stick together. This is the thing that never happens. After uh, Dunblane, um, I was, I thought to myself. You know, we're in trouble. You could see the whole edifice crumbling. I thought, why don't we get together, the big players in the industry, as in, you know, the, the money makers, all the organisations, sit round the table and just say, look, look at the NRA. Do you know how much money you'll be losing from the fact that Pistol AD won't be hacking anymore? Um, and I rang up the NRA and they said, you can have the pavilion. I said, are you coming? Oh, no, we can't come because um, 
we, we can't get involved in this. And we then, can't get involved in this. Yeah, that's the I, sort of start of the rod, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. then I started to speak to, um, who was it else? Um, a couple of other big importers. Um, is X going? Well, I'm not going then. I said, you do realise that I just want to sit down and say, look, I'm chairing this. I just want to get you guys together because together they can afford it. Look at the American NRA. Yeah. They are very powerful because they are a proper gun organisation. They really are. I mean, a, a cynical friend of mine calls it uh, calls our, uh, our NRA the No Rifle Association. <laughs> um, and look how they dumped over us after, in, in after Hungerford. I have a piece of paper saying, saying. that, uh, in their opinion, yes. um, they do see no reason why uh, modern British target shooters need a self-loading rifle. The government went, thank you. Ching, tick, we'll, 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 we'll just make this law. Um, it's, is it a little bit, I mean, when you're under pressure, when you're, when you're in a bad situation, you know, you, you become a little bit like a rat on a sinking ship, don't you? And then people start scaffolding all the way. Or actually, Life of Brian, you know, oh, oh, popular, yeah. popular people's front of yeah, yeah. splitters. <laughs> splitters, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was the splitters that was, yeah. that was always the problem, wasn't it? I, I, you know, well, the fox hunting ban or the fox hunting restrictions which came in in the early 2000s uh, seemed to me to have a lot to do with, you know, how keen the fishers and the falconers were on fox hunting. Oh, um, yeah. And, and, that, and perhaps if... I don't know, we wouldn't have saved it necessarily to anybody wanted to ban it, but, you know, we could have... But what was there to ban, really? Well, he didn't, in the end. No, you know, he but again, it's political, it isn't it? Yeah. We ban fox hunting. All those lovely foxes, they're not dogs, madam, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and, and it's this... Oh, it, uh, what annoys me is people aren't radical, aren't logical about things. They, well, they aren't in an em at an emotional time. I mean, like you can see after 1996, after Dunblane, how could you be logical? It was, it was, not, yeah. it was not a time. But then again, this, we've also learned to say things like knee-jerk reactions don't work, which is, which is good. Um, all right, uh, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful show here. Lots and lots of people enjoying it, visiting stands where there's lots and lots of guns. All terribly un-British feel from the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, what's, uh, they, they've tried to hit us very hard over trophy hunting this year, and they're going to continue to try to hit us very hard. What is... What's the problem facing the kind of core, sh your constituency, the shooting community, the shooting sports reader? What's coming down the line at you? Um, everybody is looking over their shoulder for the next ban. So it is all about the next ban. There's still a kind of we could ban things agenda. Yeah, well, they set that up. They can, they can do what they like. They're a government. Yeah. The only way to get rid of that is do what some, you know, people did many years ago in Russia and things like that you know but then again what do you replace it with oh you're calling Same. it a revolution interesting not at all <laughs> I'm an ex-soldier sir I'll lead it myself but yeah. no um, it's I think people are very worried about you know just say well I've got this um, good example two two semi-automatic rifles yes ARs and they're fun I've got one they're, they're a hu huge amount of fun so when you say uh, can we just have a quick definition and rattle through what is an AR what is I apologise I'm getting all techy here could you, could, you, could, you, could, you, could you tell me why I'm not allowed to use the word assault because it would be misconstrued. Thank you. Um, so AR is an automatic rifle. Automatic rifle, yeah, yeah. as in AR-15 automatic yes, rifle. M16 Vietnam era. It's okay. be, be, been the most popular self-loader, and it's sold as an AR-15 as a semi-auto civilian model by Colt and many others. And since they banned centerfires in the UK, you can still have two two rimfire semi-autos. Yes. Uh, the AR-15 has proved to be, or the generic AR-15 has been proved to be one of the most popular guns out there. Yes. Um, now, they have 10, 20, 25 round magazines, capacity magazines, and the government were looking at magazine capacities. That was always a consideration. Yeah. Before they banned pistols, they were looking at magazine capacities. They were maybe thinking, they may not actually say will ban them. You may say you can no longer have a Beretta 90, 92F with a 15-shot mag, but you can have an 8-shot block magazine. Um, and people are worried about that, or just saying sod it, because if somebody goes, you know, something happens yes. and they decide to ban those, then people think, oh, shut and they put money into it. You know, you, you, some of these guns cost £2,000. Yes, yes you know. so, so, you, so you need some sort of um, compensation scheme. Uh, just for people who don't know, what we're talking about here is a black knobbly rifle in 2 2 rim fire that yeah. fires lots of bullets on a semi-automatic basis. So Correct. every time you pull the trigger, it goes bang, 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 bang. No, it goes bang, bang, bang. Oh, it doesn't go bang, 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 bang? No, no it goes can bang, you, bang, bang. Can you pull the trigger really, really fast? If you were a super person, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> You've a hugely developed index finger on your right hand. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, but, I mean, inherently, you stand on a range and you shoot at paper targets with it. Yes, paper targets. That, and it's, that's what it's for. It is really, I suppose... Arguably a form of practical pistol, okay, which is makes, makes the whole thing rise about the ban. They've taken away the handguns. Yes, people still want to shoot practical competition because yes. it's very exciting. Practical shotgun is very popular in, yes, uh, in a, a, certainly a busy. We've covered it, yeah. Uh, and 
and people will not stop until there's nothing to do it with. I mean, when they banned self-loaders, we started shooting practical rifle bolt actions. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, then and, and iPass has picked up. This is the same thing, but with air pistols, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, th as you say, they, they, they want to keep on banning until until they get rid of this. This uh, this idea of um, of a sort of anti-gun or a gun control network, though, they seem a bit toothless. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's died down a bit. So there's nothing terrible been happened in the UK lately, but they'll be back out there as soon as something happens anywhere in the world. Um, I mean, I can see where they're coming from, but I don't think they can see where we're coming. It's a bit like um, prejudice. A friend of mine said to me, and I'm not trying to sound, um, should we say, um, racial here. He says, but the average Alabama field hand in the 1800s in the American South had more rights than the British handgun owner does today. That yeah, or something point. like that. Yeah, and okay, it, and, yeah. it, and he, yeah. this guy wasn't even a shooter. No. He, uh, he was a journalist. And, and I said, oh, that's quite an interesting comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. All right, so something to be worried about in the future. A little um, bit. And you have lived through the most extraordinary time for gun ownership, haven't you? I'm very lucky. I'm on the, on the downslope now. I'm 67, 68 this year. And I've pretty much owned it all and thoroughly enjoyed it all as well. Marvelous. And uh, there's not much more I can say about that apart from yes. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Moore, thank you very much. Can indeed. I just say one last thing? Go on, then, go on. Just, I'm not trying to bang the trumpet here, but the trick is if we all, air gunners, shotgunners, riflemen, target people practical get their head behind the same ball and push in the same direction because they may be taking away handguns or cell phone rifles today but one day your shotguns and your air pistols will be under the under the microscope and don't cry about it then no don't cry about it then thank you peter thank, thank you, you very much